You think dating is tough? Awkward texts? Ghosting? Rejection? Please, that's nothing. Imagine entering the world knowing that your one shot at romance is almost guaranteed to end with you being eaten alive. Welcome to the tragic, humiliating, and downright cursed life of the male redback spider. Strap in. This story is going to make your worst Tinder date look like a fairy tale. Your first memory isn't of warmth or safety. It's of chaos. You hatch inside an egg sac crammed with dozens of your siblings. It's dark, cramped, and your very first instinct is hunger. You're blind, weak, and soft-skinned. But that doesn't stop your brothers and sisters from trying to snack on you. Cannibalism isn't plan B in this family. It's the default setting. If you manage to crawl your way out of that nursery of nightmares, congratulations. You've survived your first brush with death, but it won't be your last. Outside the sack, the world is a minefield. Birds, wasps, ants, every creature with a mouth seems to have you on the menu. Even the breeze can kill you, flinging your tiny body into the jaws of a waiting predator. You're not a proud arachnid hunter yet. You're basically a crouton with legs. As you stumble through your early days, you start eating whatever microscopic prey you can manage. Tiny flies, gnats, maybe a dumb insect that wandered too close. Your survival strategy is simple. Hide, eat fast, and avoid being noticed. But as you grow, you notice something horrifying. Your sisters, yes, those same siblings who tried to eat you in the egg sac, are getting bigger, much bigger. Their legs stretch longer, their bodies swell, and their glossy black abdomens start glowing with that ominous red stripe. They're turning into giants. You, on the other hand, you stop growing early, permanently small, permanently fragile. Evolution has dealt you the cruelest hand imaginable. You're the snack-sized version of your own species. At full maturity, the female redback spider is 10 times your size. To put that in perspective, it's like a human guy showing up on a date with someone the size of a two-story house. And not just any house-sized creature, a house-sized creature that routinely kills and eats her partners. You? You're just a nervous, undersized bug with a biological clock ticking down like a time bomb. Males don't live long, maybe six to seven months if you're lucky. And every day of that short life is spent wandering, desperately searching for a female's web. That's not romance. That's a death march. Finding a female is the hardest road trip you'll ever take. You crawl across dangerous terrain, gardens, grasslands, the undersides of rocks, dodging predators at every turn. Birds swoop overhead. Lizards dart from cracks. Even ants patrol like armies looking for stray invaders. And through it all, you keep moving, guided only by faint chemical scents in the air, pheromones leading you to your fate. It could take days, weeks, your tiny body is burning calories faster than you can replace them. Every shadow looks like doom. And then, finally, you see it. The sprawling, silken chaos of a female redback's web. This is it. The finish line, the jackpot, the execution chamber. Of course, you can't just waltz in. To her, you're not potential boyfriend material. You're food. If you charge in unannounced, she'll treat you like any other unlucky insect wrap you in silk, jab her fangs in, and suck out your insides like a protein shake. So you have to introduce yourself. You pluck at the threads of her web in a very specific way, sending out vibrations that say, hey, not food, lover maybe? It's like knocking politely on the door of a haunted house, hoping the ghost decides not to murder you. Sometimes she ignores you. Sometimes she lunges anyway. But if the stars align and she's in the mood, she'll let you climb closer. Not because she cares, because she's curious. Approaching her is like walking into a gladiator arena unarmed. She towers over you, legs spread across her enormous web like the bars of a prison cell. Her abdomen is huge, glossy, striped in crimson, a warning sign to the world. You tremble, you hesitate, you pray, and then she doesn't kill you, yet. Instead, she allows you to climb onto her back. For a split second, you feel like the luckiest spider alive. But here's the punchline. This is not a happy ending. This is the beginning of the end. See, redback mating has a unique twist. Midway through the act, you, yes, you, the male, perform a dramatic flip. 
You literally swing your tiny body upside down and press your abdomen directly into her fangs, on purpose. Because while she's chewing through your guts, your sperm transfer actually lasts longer, giving you a slightly better chance of fathering her offspring. It's the biological equivalent of holding the door open for someone who's about to stab you. And here's the kicker. If you don't sacrifice yourself, she might reject you entirely. Evolution has hardwired you to throw yourself into the meat grinder. Love hurts, but in your case, it kills. As she devours you alive, she continues mating. Your body twitches, your legs curl, your life drains away. And she, she's unfazed. To her, you're not a partner. You're a protein supplement, a post-date snack. And the worst part? She benefits more from killing you. A male redback that sacrifices himself increases the chances that his genes, and his genes alone, fertilize her eggs. In short, dying is your best shot at fatherhood. Romance, redback style. Very rarely, a male survives the ordeal. Maybe she's distracted. Maybe she's already full. But even then, don't get too comfortable. Survivors usually die shortly afterward, from exhaustion, injuries, or because they stumble into another hungry female's web. Your evolutionary role is clear. Mate once, die quickly. You're the mayfly of the spider dating scene. Now, let's compare your miserable existence with hers. A female redback can live for two to three years. She controls the web, chooses her mates, and enjoys a steady supply of insects plus the occasional male who shows up to volunteer his body. She lays multiple egg sacs, each filled with hundreds of spiderlings, ensuring her genetic legacy carries on. She is queen, executioner, and matriarch rolled into one. You? You're a footnote in her story. So why does nature do this? Why create males doomed to die after one tragic date? The answer is brutal efficiency. In species where females can store sperm for long periods, competition between males is fierce. By sacrificing yourself, you reduce the chances of another male swooping in afterward. It's not romance, it's a reproductive hack. Evolution decided it's better for one male to die and secure his genetic contribution than for dozens to waste energy fighting over the same female. Basically, you're disposable. A biological USB drive, plugged in and thrown away. So let's recap. You're born into a cannibalistic family. You grow up snack-sized compared to your sisters. You spend your short life wandering, dodging predators, just to crawl into the web of a giant who will almost certainly kill you. Your one chance at romance ends with you flipping into her fangs, sacrificing yourself so your genes survive. Being a male redback spider isn't just unlucky, it's comedy and tragedy rolled into one eight-legged disaster. So the next time you think your love life is cursed, remember this. At least your partner isn't biologically programmed to eat you alive, or is she?